Hi there. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers. Um, I've now got over 300 of you, which is absolutely fantastic. So thanks for all your support and advice that you've given me. Um, now last week, I was contacted by a fellow turner called uh, Keith Skinner. And he was um, interested in having a, a bit of a closer look at my lathe. So I invited him over and uh, I think he was suitably impressed. And in return for that, he very kindly uh, brought me a piece of spotted beech. And I've been thinking over the weekend what to make with it. And I noticed uh, Mike Walt's latest video. He's just um, produced a uh, small lidded box with an ebony knob. Um, so I thought with it being spotted beech and some black in it, it would be quite appropriate to have a go at making a small lidded box with a, a piece of ebony. Um, so I'm planning on cutting this into maybe thirds and using one of these thirds to make the lidded box. Um, now I've ordered some ebony uh, off eBay. I'm quite disappointed really because in the description it said it was uh, being shipped from uh, London, Great Britain. And once I paid for it, it came up with Hong Kong. So I don't know how long it's going to take for this piece of ebony to arrive. Um, so if anybody's any um, advice or suggestions on where I can get ebony from in the future from the UK, that'd be fantastic. If you can just drop me a little message, that'd be great. So anyway, I'll have a go at this lidded box and uh, we'll see how we get on. So I've decided just to cut a three inch piece off this. So before proceeding, um, I notice I've got some tear out here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, thin CA glue on it to see if that helps. Okay, I've put quite um, a deep tenon on here. It's about eight millimeters by about 45 millimeters in diameter so what I'm going to do is to switch this round onto a four jaw chuck and then do the tenon on this side and then decide where to cut it for the lid okay so what I'll do is bring the tailstock up and tight and then I'll tighten up the chuck okay so um, I've measured where the lid's going to be so it's um, 
a third of the overall width. So this measures about um, two and a quarter inches in total. So the lid's going to be about three quarters of an inch. And I've created a tenon on this side, which is about uh, just over 30 millimetres, about an inch and a quarter in diameter. So I'll part that off and see how we get on. So now I can just work on the lid. Okay, so I've uh, sanded it to 400 and uh, put some sailor sanding sealer on it. And now for some Yorkshire grit. And I shall finish that off with some uh, wood wax 22 and some uh, Hampshire Sheen micro crystalline wax. So the inside of the lid is finished so now I need to use a parting tool to just take this edge off here so we can get a snug fit. Close. That feels good.
Okay, I've finished the inside in the usual way. Um, what I haven't done is finish this edge here because I've got a really nice fit at the moment. And I think if I put any finish on it, it's going to affect the fit. So uh, I think we'll leave it at that really. Okay, so now I'll have a go at shaping the top and uh, finishing the sides up. Right then, uh, I'm not overly confident with the spindle gouge. Um, but anyway, I've, I've come up with that shape, which I think will be okay. Um, but I might have to change it once I make the little uh, knob out of ebony. Um, unfortunately, I had a really tight fit, but with putting that on there and doing turning, it's come loose. So, for the moment, I'm just going to put that round there, and I'm just going to bore a little hole in here ready for the uh, ebony knob well I didn't really want that to happen I've gone too far anyway there we are so what I've decided to do now is I put some kitchen paper uh, in there uh, just to hold the top on a bit firmer. So I'm going to have a go at sanding to 400. I'm going to apply the finish as much as I can and then um, I'll try and do an adjustment on here to make the lid fit better. Okay, so I've finished the outside of the box and uh, I'm quite happy with that. So what I've done now is just mounted these mini cold jaws and I just need to finish the bottom. So I've just put a bit of kitchen paper in here just to protect the top. Let's see how we get on. I think one of the things to remember with cold jaws is you need to minimise the amount of sort of side pressure you might put on it because it's going to try and spin it. Um, so I'm going to use this bowl gouge uh, back in my comfort zone, I think, and uh, just try and uh, you know do light cuts here with pressure that way, as opposed to trying to do something that way with a parting tool or something like that. So let's see how we get on.
Well, this seems to be turning out to be a bit of a disaster. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to get rid of this with this um, little saw, this tenon saw. And I'll try and clean that up now. So I've just finished off the base in the usual way. So the good news is my ebony has arrived and I've done a bit of a design of the knob, uh, obviously not to scale. So I'll go over to the lathe and try and turn it. So I've just uh, turned a piece of ebony round and uh, marked uh, a, a couple of positions. That is the um, base of the knob that will sort of sit on top of the lid. So that needs to be turned down here um, to about four millimeters to fit in the hole uh, in the lid. And then this area here, that will be the actual knob itself. And I'll part it off there eventually. So that's the plan. So I'm happy with the shape of the knob, uh, but unfortunately I now realise that I probably should have made it the other way around, so the, the top of the knob is at this side, because uh, then I could have easily parted it off, so now I'm going to have to part it off and somehow finish the top of the knob, uh, maybe attach it to a Jacob's chuck or something like that. So I've fitted the Jacob's chuck and I'll just uh, finish off the knob on here. Hi there, uh, first of all uh, many thanks to Mike Waltz for inspiring me to have a go at my first loaded box uh, which I found quite challenging. Um, also thanks to Keith Skinner for giving me the piece of spotted beach. Um, very much appreciate it Keith, thanks a lot. So what have I learned? Um, well, I've learnt that the whole process I found uh, was quite challenging. Um, there's a few things I would do differently. First of all, um, when working on the base, I, I, would, I think it's better to part it off when it's actually on the forge or chuck, as opposed to taking the approach I, I took. Um, secondly, when working on the top, when it's attached to the base, put some tape around it to top the stop, to, to stop the top from spinning. Thirdly, I probably should have approached the um, turning of the knob in a different way. As I referred to it in the video, I probably should have had the knob on the right hand side as opposed to the left, um, which caused me some, some problems. And as my uh, most of my experiences in bowl work and I'm quite confident with the bowl gouge. Um, spindle turning is a bit of a challenge for me. So, um, I must remember to keep on referring to this book. It's fantastic. It's a foundation course by Keith Rowley. I bought it on eBay for a couple of pounds. And 
um, had I refreshed my memory uh, on spindle turning uh, when I was part through the process. So it's invaluable is that. So finally the box. I'm very happy with the result. Um, the finish is good. There's only one slight problem. When it spun off the lathe it just picked up a little ding there. Uh, but apart from that, I'm very happy with it. Hope you like it. Thank you.